Okay, is it just me or is your entire TikTok for you page just BBLs? Be who you are for your pride. Don't hide. Before we get into this video, go check out my Patreon. I just uploaded a podcast about the book why men love bitches and the lessons that it has on confidence and self i couldn't get a sponsor for this video so please help us sit around go subscribe like every other video i see is some bitch who got off the plane straight from the dominican republic from getting her bbl i think it all started with the bbl effect trend that's been going around and so the algorithm was just like oh bbls okay here you go and i swear like all i see now is before and afters of brazilian butt lifts and it's honestly kind of freaking me out because there are so many of them to the point where it really just looks mad regular like everybody has one everybody's getting one your favorite influencer even your friend from high school is getting a bbl it feels like it's something as simple as like getting lip injections or even just getting a waist trainer off of skims.com it is so normal and it blows my mind because this surgery is like one of the most dangerous plastic surgery operations that you can get like one in three thousand people die type unfortunately studies have now shown that it has the highest mortality rate death rate in all of plastic surgery there was a study that showed that literally one in three thousand women who undergo this surgery die from it so it really just blows my mind that people are like this is your sign to get a bbl like oh really is this 30 second highlight reel my sign to go get possibly life endangering surgery like what what do you mean that's my sign bro like that makes no sense and i really hate those videos because there are really people out here impressionable enough to be like you know what barbie tings for 20 on tiktok is right I should get that BBL, let me sign up. And since it's become so normal, a lot of people are taking shortcuts so they can get it at a cheaper price because a lot of the people on TikTok and the people watching these TikToks are regular working class people. They're not Kylie Jenner and they can't just go to the best surgeon that probably won't kill them or give them some kind of infection but because you know regular people can't afford to pay like sixteen thousand dollars for a surgery they're gonna go to the dr or to columbia and get these surgeries for half the price and then they come back and you know it goes wrong and i know i'm kind of getting ahead of myself right now because i have a somewhat organized layout for this video but the whole trend honestly just does not sit right with me and y'all know how i feel about plastic surgery if you've seen my video about beauty standards but the whole bbl epidemic deserves a whole video on itself because this is out of hand so the first note i have is brazilian butt lifts are a death trap exclamation point like i know it sounds dramatic oh death trap like relax it's just surgery like people get them all the time it's fine but like one in three thousand people dying from a brazilian butt lift like that's a lot of people and i just like is it worth it like is it really worth it i don't know man because i swear the same people who get these bbls are the ones who are like no my doctor said i have to get this surgery but like i don't really like surgery it's just too scary like anesthesia really just freaks me out and i just if i don't need to get surgery i'm not going to but then the next week they're on a plane to Colombia to get their ass injected with silicone there's like this weird disconnect with cosmetic surgery and because it's a choice, it seems more safe or more doable, even though the risk is just as high, if not higher, depending on the surgery. If it's mandatory, someone's telling you you have to do that, and that seems a bit more scary, whereas if it's something that you're doing from your own free will, then it's like, oh, like, it's fine. Especially because cosmetic surgery has nothing to do with your health. If you're getting surgery done that's related to your health, then it feels a lot more riskier because you're probably getting it so you can survive. But with plastic surgery it's just like oh well it's your choice like it's your body do whatever you want as long as you have the money go for it but what people understand is like your body doesn't know the difference between that like you're still going under anesthesia you're still getting something injected to you or going under the knife whatever it is and that shouldn't be taken so lightly like oh i saw it on tiktok and it'll make my fashion nova dresses look better on me so i guess i'll go for it like this is something you really shouldn't just do because it's a trend and that's the thing this is a trend like i know a lot of girls are like no like 
I really thought about it. I'm doing it for me. Doing it. Yeah, we'll get into that phrase later. But I'm doing it for me. It's my choice. And like, yeah, that's cool. But what are you going to do in like 10 to 20 years when having a fat ass is not trendy anymore? Because that's the thing. All of these different surgeries that women get fluctuate depending on what's trendy. Like obviously boob jobs are still popular, but I feel like even... 10, 20 years ago, boob jobs were really the thing because it was popular to have huge tits and like have a super skinny body. Like just be shaped like a pea and you're good. But now it's a different kind of body that's trendy. And so no one was really getting BBLs like that back in the early 2000s or 90s. I just think it's really weird that people are willing to permanently change their bodies for a trend. And I, I don't know why that's not clicking with people because to me, that's what it is. It's a trend. Like obviously curvy bodies will always be beautiful, but the reason so many people are getting BBLs is because everyone has a fat ass now all of a sudden. And we all know like the Kardashians or whatever, they kind of popularize the big butts and everything. And it's not just celebrities and magazines with like, you know, the huge tits and huge ass or like super skinny, whatever. Like now that we have social media, people can see their favorite Instagram models or even their friends get these surgeries and social media is so like intertwined with our everyday lives now. It's easy to be heavily influenced through social media when it comes to not only clothes, but also body types. Like it would be one thing if Kim Kardashian and like a handful of other celebrities were the only people who got Brazilian butt lifts. But the thing is, you can go on TikTok and see regular regular bitches getting Brazilian butt lifts. So now everybody's getting one and it's just like a normal thing. And so if everyone's getting a BBL, then everyone's gonna think, oh shit, like I need to have a fat ass now because that's what everybody looks like. And so a lot of people's insecurities just stem from what's trendy because their body doesn't fit into what is currently up to par. That being said though, like I get it because I'm constantly bombarded with images of curvy women, girls with BBLs, whatever. And the only reason why I probably don't feel insecure about my body is because my body type aligns with this trend. I've seen them before and after videos and like they look good. Like I'm not gonna lie, like they do look good. And when I see the before, sometimes I'm like, oh shit girl, like okay, I, I get it. I get why you got the BBL. Like oh if I were you, I'd want to get one too. If you're built like this and everybody's like this, like you're gonna feel some type of way about it. And I use the word everybody loosely because it's just everybody on social media. Like real people don't look like this. And the sad but kind of obvious thing about this is that the girls who get BBL still feel insecure afterwards. Like I saw this video, like I saw this one TikTok where this girl was talking about her body after her procedure and she was literally just picking apart every tiny little thing about her body that she still didn't like after the surgery and she's blaming it on the surgery but it's like, no girl, like it's you. <laughs> like you're just really insecure and it doesn't matter how much fat you inject into your ass, like you're still gonna hate your body in one way or another. And this other girl said, kind of the same thing she was like yeah i have body dysmorphia and like my body looks good i got it done for a reason but like i still am not happy with how my body looks so many people are getting plastic surgery because they think it'll make them happier and like i'm sure there are people who like genuinely are happier afterwards like like that would be kind of silly to think otherwise because why would you pay thousands of dollars just to feel the exact same but at the end of the day, you don't fix what's going on internally. It doesn't matter what's going on externally. You're still going to be unhappy. And you know these girls are deeply insecure and have some sort of body dysmorphia because if you're willing to put your life on the line and pay thousands of dollars for this and to go through all this pain and discomfort, like literal pain, you really got to hate the way that your ass looks. There is no way in hell you could pay me to do a BBL. Like I've seen the videos of girls after their procedure and that shit looks brutal. Someone was like, yeah, surgery is not the easy way out. Like this shit still hurts after the surgery. You still have to do like weeks of recovery and upkeep. Honestly, my heart goes out to those girls for real. Like anyone out there who wants to get a BBL, like, I'm sorry, honestly, that you feel like you have to get this surgery to feel more attractive or to feel worthy or whatever it is that it's gonna fix for you because I think this surgery is like some sort of epidemic, like it is some sort of sickness. It, it's 
fucked up. Like, I, I feel like women are literally being brainwashed, bro, because this is killing us and it's not good for us, like, physically. It's not pushing women forward in any way, shape, or form. I know somebody in the comments like, eh, I am a feminist and I believe that you can do whatever you want with your body. Yeah, go ahead, kill yourself if you want to in the name of vanity, but don't do it and, and say it's feminism. People's ideas of what a real body looks like is honestly so warped now because I was looking through the BBL hashtag on TikTok for research purposes, of course, and I saw this girl do like a before and after try on haul and half the comments were, oh, it looks so natural and half the comments were like, it looks busted, it doesn't look natural and it's like, so what is the truth? Like, which is it? Nobody knows what a real ass looks like anymore or what a natural BBL looks like. I don't even know because it's just like, it's so all over the place because it's still, it's still such a new surgery. It really hasn't been around for that long so I don't think people really understand like the right way to do it because there are doctors out here who are not board certified giving out BBLs and strip malls. But where I caution patients is to be very careful if the person who's doing it on you is not a true expert in it. You don't want somebody dabbling in your butt. And that's why it's also, I think, so dangerous because it's just like something people do in their garage or in their basement and they're just kind of like, well, it's cheaper, so YOLO, am I right, ladies? No. Ladies, I'm not right at all. I want to find a way to say this that doesn't come off as like super, I'm not like other girls or like pick me esque, but I'm gonna be honest with you seeing all these women get BBLs made me feel better about myself. I'm sorry, I know, but hear me out. The reason why it kind of made me feel better is because I'm like, shit, girls are out here buying what I already got naturally. Like, shoo, it's not even like really about that, and I really don't want to push that narrative because it's really not helpful especially to women out there who like feel like they need this the reason i bring this up is because trendiness really does affect people's body image nobody wanted an ass like 20 years ago it used to be oh becky does my ass look big in these jeans and now it's like hey becky does my ass look fat or not that's where you're going fat ass <laughs> And sometimes I wonder like, shit, if I was born in a different era, how would I feel about my body? Because being curvy and like having a butt or whatever wasn't always the trend. I mean, within the black community, it's always been accepted to have a big butt. Like that's kind of the beauty standard within the black community. But now universally, like even white girls want a fatty and that really means something. So, you know, if you feel like your body isn't good enough or like you don't have Kylie Jenner's body or whatever, just wait on it. Just give it a few years. I'm sure your body type will come around in the cycle. Body shouldn't be trendy, but like that's really just how it is. Yo, if this video gets 10K likes, I'll do an ass reveal. Run it up, run it up. I just might spin it all. We gon' run it up. I just might spin it all. We gon' run it I mean, BBLs are so trendy that there are entire stores dedicated to the BBL look, aka Fashion Nova, aka the BBL boutique. Actually, let's look through Fashion Nova right now and see what kind of BBL merch we can find because I swear every single item on that website is strictly for BBL women and also um, fake titty women, the booby BBL deluxe, <laughs> the booby BBL deluxe supreme. So I think this is a fair assessment of a BBL booby supreme i mean like i don't really see anybody without fake tits wearing something like this i mean must i say more bro does she even have where are her nipples bro the beauty standards for women is really getting out of hand like we can't even have nipples no more see like this is the shit i'm talking about bbl merch this is only someone with a bbl and fake titties could pull this kind of look off i mean like i guess a regular person could wear it but like this is made for someone who has their body done like what truly what am i supposed to do with this like is this even a dress <laughs> where are you wearing this i just want to know to your chem 101 lecture the coffee shop I mean, I guess the club right but like shit even that's like i don't know what's with the cutouts like, is that something that BBLs invented themselves? Like, if BBLs weren't a trend, I don't think this dress would exist. Because honestly, why should it? I mean, this is kind of atrocious. 
it just looks unfinished. It's like that scene in Mean Girls where she cuts the the holes in the in the chest and then Regina's like, oh yeah, okay. I mean, all the models have the same body type, so it's like, how is a normal person supposed to look at this and be like, yeah, these clothes are made for me. I think I'd look really good in these. I feel very included. Like, this is a very specific demographic. So I think the part about this whole BBL epidemic that really haunts me the most is the botched BBLs because there's a lot of them. A lot of people think that they're just gonna go to the DR, pay like $500 for a Kylie Jenner makeover and they're just gonna look like a baddie for life. It's not that simple. Even some of your favorite celebrities with BBLs look kinda busted. Like the wisdom tooth look is really in season right now. Oftentimes you'll hear people say like, oh, it looks like she's wearing a diaper. And really like it does look like she just shot herself multiple times and just never changed her pants. And now she's out here like twerking like, eh, I got a fatty. It's like, yeah, girl, but at what cost? It's hard to look at, honestly, because it looks so obvious. Listen, I've seen people in real life with BBLs on the street and you can clock it instantly, I promise. Cause it looks unnatural. Like so many of these girls are like, oh, do me up like Kylie. I'm trying to be like Kim K. But, but they literally are built like Jack Skeleton. And it's like, girl, where do you expect the fat to go? You can't just be built like a stick and then expect to have a fat ass. Like it looks weird. You know their body cannot support all that fat. And it's like, I'm surprised that like you're not busting at the seams at this point but that's not sustainable these girls are so blind and so like caught up in their own body dysmorphia or insecurity whatever it is that they can't even understand that getting what they want isn't possible and even if they do force a doctor somewhere else to give it to them it's probably gonna make them feel worse about themselves i'm really tired of hearing women say oh i i, I do it for me i'm getting foreign objects implanted inside of me because i love myself girl shut up no you don't that's why you're paying thousands of dollars to change the way that you look a lot of these surgeries are being done on more sexualized areas of the body like the chest and the butt I remember I said something like this in my male gaze video where I was like, oh, I don't think women would get breast implants if it weren't for the male gaze. And so many people were like, no, I would get it. I'm like, okay, yeah, sure, Susan. Just whatever helps you sleep at night. But really though, like, think about it. Who are we getting these surgeries for? Like, even if consciously you're like, oh, I'm doing it for me. I'm not doing it for a man. It's like the male gaze is the reason why these body types become trendy in the first place because it's what's deemed as attractive for a woman and what is deemed as attractive for a woman is usually dictated by the male gaze like women are the ones getting these surgeries not men men get surgery but not at the same volume as women especially when it comes to body altercations like there's a reason for that and the fact that women are out here getting surgeries that are likely to kill them sounds like the patriarchy at work if i've ever heard it especially because most of the people getting these bbls are black women women of color are the ones getting these surgeries most of the times like yeah there are white girls getting it but a lot of women of color are getting these surgeries and what really just kind of puts a nail in the coffin is the fact that a lot of these working class black women are going overseas to get these surgeries and then when they come back and they have complications they can't afford to go to u.s hospitals to fix whatever is going on with their body it's not a one and done deal and the people who aren't rich getting these surgeries can't afford the upkeep especially if they're in the u.s like this should be a health crisis honestly because i don't think this is normal and it doesn't sit right with me that most of the women affected by this surgery are black women and black women are heavily mistreated and misdiagnosed when it comes to medicine i mean like there are statistics on this like black women are like the most likely to die during childbirth because doctors don't believe us when we say we are in pain a lot of us die when we're in hospitals because doctors 
don't care about us they have these biases about us and these stereotypes and they think oh black women are strong they don't feel pain like they're lying or they're just being dramatic but no like these women are in pain and they're dying because nobody's listening to us so it really scares me that all these women are getting these deadly surgeries having complications when they come back home to the united states they can't afford health care and if they do go to the hospital no one believes them when they say that they're in pain. And I'm sure a lot of these black women who go to US hospitals after getting the surgery aren't taken seriously because these doctors probably look at them and they're like, oh, well, like, you're dumb for doing this to yourself. Like, why should I help you when there are like people dying from like real reasons? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, it's a very layered situation and it really scares me. Shall we look through some of these TikToks? Let's, let's do it. BBL wheelchair line leaving the Dominican Republic like bro <laughs> that's hella heads <laughs> like what how is this normal honestly this is the tiktok that made me want to make this video because i was honestly shocked like really there are that many girls out here getting bbls that they're forming a line in the airports i've had two bbls and i'm here to show you the reality of recovery Two, a lot of these girls are getting not one, but two rounds of BBL surgery because they're like not happy with the first results. So they find somebody else to to pump them more with fat, like freaking GMO chickens. But let me shut the hell up and continue. Looking like a marshmallow in compression garments, foams, pads, etc. Chugging water every second of the day. Only can be out of compression garments for at most an hour a day for a massage and shower because when they remove your fat, your skin and muscle have space between it, so you have to compress it to help it stick together. Why does she sound like an art project? Like, oh, you gotta wait till the glue dries and you gotta let it stay there for a few hours. Like, what is this? This ain't build a bitch. <laughs> Recovery is not glamorous, surgery is not an easy way out. And to that, I ask, is it worth it? This video really had me feeling some type of way. Like, this was sad, honestly. It would look much better if they just took the fat out from those sides. But it's whatever, and the side looks fine. Because, like, I'm watching this video, and I'm thinking, no, like, if you had it the way that you wanted, it would just look so messed up. It wouldn't look right. But this girl probably spends way too much time on Instagram and TikTok comparing her body to these hyper sexualized images of women that aren't real like people don't look human anymore it's crazy and so she's looking at these alien looking ass bitches and thinking like that's normal and that's what's beautiful shawty wants the extreme and that look may be cute now honestly but in a few years like no so obviously i got my body done and Body dysmorphia is a B-I-T-C-H. I thought I had it bad, but now, like, I was swollen. I love the results. Now I'm not as swollen, so obviously they don't, doesn't look, you know, as how I was planned it to look. And it's so mind-fucking because all day today I've been trying on clothes and I'm like, oh, why does it look like this? Like, I'm tripping. Like, I looks cute. I love it. But my body dysmorphia is not letting me enjoy it. And it's like... My head is the problem and I need to see a therapist. She looks good though. Like that's the thing. She literally looks good. And she can honestly pass that as like a natural body. Like no surgery. But these bitches want to be IMVU characters and they don't even recognize what a real body looks like. Or maybe it's not even that. Like, like she's saying body dysmorphia. Like she cannot see her body for what it actually is. And she's always going to pick it apart no matter how many surgeries she gets. And that's the scary thing is the women who do have the money to get surgery over and over again, they just keep going because it's never enough. Well, thank you for going down BBL hell with me. I really do have sympathy for girls who feel like they need this. Like I, I understand feeling outside of your body or just hating your body so much, but like, uh, I don't know, maybe there's a different way. I don't think this shit is good for people. It's not good for your health. Literally, it's not good for your health. It's not good for your mental health. I'm sure it's not good for your spirit. Think about this shit, you know? Don't let people on TikTok make you risk your life. Just put your phone down, take a look at what real people look like. Go outside. So yeah, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. So yeah, see you in the next video. Goodbye.